The chairman, as you know, there are people demonstrating against Wall Street in New York City and other cities around the country, and I think the perception on the part of these demonstrators and millions of other Americans is that as a result of the greed, the recklessness, and the illegal behavior on Wall Street, we were plunged into this horrendous recession we're currently in. Do you agree with that assessment? Did Wall Street's greed and recklessness cause this recession that led to so many people losing their jobs? It had an excessive risk taking on Wall Street had a lot to do with it and so did some failures on the part of regulators. I can argue the case for uh, their right to express their outright frustration with what is going on and eventually we will go bankrupt eventually we will undermine our productivity we've had no new jobs in the past 10 years yet we've had 30 million uh, uh, increase in our population that eventually our jobs would go overseas and the pie would shrink and there would be an aggressive attitude to get a piece of the pie that's no longer there. And this is what we're seeing. This Occupy stuff's going on, I haven't had a chance to talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. I don't know where you fall or what you've seen, but... It's crazy that those guys haven't done any time yet. Well, there's no leader, that's the thing. You know, they're trying to find someone to put away where they can stop the movement. The scariest thing about Occupy Wall Street for them is that there's no one person with a megaphone. Right, it's the only reason they're lasting yeah. so long. Well, I mean, it could dude, be... It's getting bigger, too. It's, it's bigger and bigger every day. This is the beginning of something huge. Right. What it looked like was like one of them fucking Glenn Beck rallies that just got real long, lasted a while. Mm -hmm. Everybody's pissed. Yeah, I get it, you're pissed. I'm pissed, too. But then, after a couple of weeks, it's like, this is not... This same. This is a different feeling. This has an overthrow the government feel to it. Yeah, I mean, I saw people yeah. out there for the first time with like giant signs that said audit the Fed. There's no political party involved in any of this. This is the big question about this Occupy Wall Street thing is that it's already gotten way past a boiling point and it's gotten to a point where if the economy doesn't improve and these people don't have to go back to work, well, what the fuck is going to stop them from escalating? Right. What the fuck is going to stop this from getting I bigger love the, and bigger? I love when people go, get a job, you hippie. Get a fucking job. It's like, what, well, what create jobs? one for yeah. me. What are you talking create about? Create one for me and I'll take it. That's why I'm out here, asshole. Everybody says get a job today is an asshole. How about you occupy a job? How, how about proceeding with your education? Nah, uh, they'd rather do Woodstock in Manhattan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? What you talking about, Will? So you think it's being co-opted by nefarious forces that are working undercover to try to sabotage things? I think so, yeah. Really? Yeah. And what are they, what are they done, do? They do that to every movement. I mean, mm -hmm. from the attack ads to marginalizing the message to entrapment. They already have agent provocateurs, but it sucks. This movement isn't anti-cop whatsoever, and it sucks that it's unfortunately only the bad and salacious stuff gets the news coverage. Well, you know? it's, it, that's important, though, because people need to know what can happen, that that oh, of can course. happen. We need of to course. know about this. This Citibank thing is fucking disgusting. This should be fraud. We should be able to sue them for fraud. Yeah, I hope they can. Misrepresenting our tax dollars and misrepresenting your position to protect us. Like, like the officer Tony Baloney that pepper sprayed those women that were in the net. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw that video. Yeah, I did. Like, that guy lost 10 vacation days. That's it? That was his punishment. Somebody had a good point about Occupy Wall Street and they said all we need is one or two bounce checks and the cops are with us. Yeah. And that's so true because the cops are with us. The idea that you can get the cops to act as protectors for these cocksuckers is really dark. Jamie Kilstein made a tweet and uh, this tweet will forever, in my mind, embody what is going on here. He, he made this tweet, he was down at Occupy Wall Street, he was talking about how fucking crazy it is. He wrote, they just arrested a guy because they thought he was the leader, period. There are no leaders. Occupy Wall Street. Those who make peaceful revolution impossible will make violent revolution inevitable. But it's literally like, as this is going on, and the cops are there protecting Wall Street, J.P. Morgan is making multi-million dollar donations to the NYPD. That's why it was inspiring to watch That's... that Marine. They don't have guns! Why are you hurting these people? There is no honor in this! Why are y'all gearing up like this is war? This is not war! How are you? How do you sleep at night? J.P. Morgan Chase donates 4.6 million to NYPD during the protest. During the protest. So That's amazing. It's amazing. This is something that would have happened a long time ago. We would have never heard about right. it. But look, it look at the site CNN. that that announcement is on. That's on their official website. 
It's not like they tried to hide this. They were like, hey world, we just donated 4.6 million to the NYPD. That's how good we are as people. And then the cops are acting as if that 4.6 million is worth more than whatever these fucking regular people pay out of their paychecks every goddamn week. And a percentage of that, for sure, right. has to go to public service. And you are just going to bend over and take it up the coolie for 4.6 from some fucking bankers. Yeah. In Wall Street, not only have they donated $4.6 million to the police, but they also started hiring the police, something that most people don't know. You can hire a police officer for a roughly $37 an hour, paid work there, yeah. and they work as a police officer with a real badge and a real gun and the real ability to arrest, but they're working for the bank. Fire, it's a yeah. loophole where these are police officers, but they're doing the bidding of the bank. It's fucking crazy. I didn't know that was legal. But it's just so sad to see these cops are targeting these people. Yeah. It's like, man, what do, is this fucking Chicago in the 60s? What the fuck is this? Your job entails helping people out, man. That's what you're here for. You are citizens that have extra power. And we give you that extra power so that you make things nicer. Did you see the Berkeley footage? No, I didn't. Cops with batons just shoving them into the guts of these uh, little, little kids. Girls, uh, too. Girls. Uh, shoving these batons into their sides, just jabbing them over and over, and the kids are screaming. The kids are in a crowd, okay, so the kids are in the front of the crowd, and they can't even go anywhere. It's probably one it's of the many It's just one of the many footage of yeah, the cops doing it there. beating people. They're sticking... They're, Look at him, I see him. Look at him doing yeah, that shit, yeah, man. They're poking him. This isn't as clear. Yeah, yeah, they're hitting him. Holy yeah. shit. I haven't seen this one. They're just beating them. are these people? This small group of men has to face this gigantic horde of unarmed people. And a small group of men, you know, they immediately have to automatically go on a defensive. And yeah. look at them, they have bulletproof vests on and fucking helmets and guns strapped to their side and batons. You know, oh, yeah. and they also have to wear riot gear with face shields and shit. I mean, they're coming at you, letting you know that they're there to fight. That. So, this is so surreal. To me, this is happening right now. This is... What, what a sign of the times this is, man. It's like watching an Alex Jones dream or something. It's watching... This yeah. is like the shit he was talking about. What forever. I always say about Alex Jones, he's right 70% of the time. It's hard for me to believe that they're thinking about the new world order or protecting globalization. Yeah, it feels exactly. like they're just normal guys well, who are doing that. It's a terrible position it. to be in. I mean, imagine if you're a cop and all of a sudden they tell you, this is what you have to do. You have to get the hippies off the lawn. Uh, sir, there's 300,000 of them. What are you going to do? How are yeah. you going to get them off the lawn? Good luck. You can't clear that lawn, man. You, what, if you're a cop, what the fuck are you going to do? You know, I, the cops are obviously being sent there to keep these people from protesting or push them off of certain areas or keep them from entering certain places. But at the end of the day, you know, they're stuck. There's no excuse for what they're doing. There's no excuse for beating those people. There's no excuse for prodding those people. Then people you don't have to them. hit someone who's not hitting you, man. No, no, those people are hitting back. I, I think as soon as you turn cops loose on people, cops are used to dealing with the enemy. They're used to dealing with criminals. They're used to behaving a certain way because out in their world, they have to behave that way. If you want to stay alive as a cop, you got to take no bullshit from any fucking perps. you got to deal with dangerous, violent criminals that don't want to go to jail and know that you want to put them in jail. It's a fucking high-pressure, high-stress job. Absolutely. The person to blame is not those cops. The person to blame is the person who put those cops in a position where they're going after law-abiding citizens. Well, That's the problem because... Cops are wired to deal with criminals. And when some asshole tells these cops, now you have to go and you have to push back these crowds of unhappy, intelligent people who are nonviolent. And these yeah. people have very valid points about the corruption that has eroded our system to an almost unfixable point. And they're fucking upset because they're in college and where the fuck is their future? And yeah. You cunts have ruined the whole batch. There's nothing left for us. We're growing up and we're coming out and there's nothing left for us, you fuckheads. You've ruined the whole thing. And you're a cop, man, and you are the enemy. You represent the man. Yeah. They treat you hostily. You treat them hostily. They don't listen to you. You treat them like criminals. That's how you're wired. You're wired to treat criminals Training. like criminals. But it's also because there's a lot of douchebags in those groups. The, the, here's the other part, though. 
the Occupy movement, all right, there's a lot of shenanigans going on. A lot sure. of it is just nuts. It's not all a sure. bunch of people with valid points that are out there trying to resolve the issues that we currently have. A lot of it is just crazy assholes, you know? I mean, it's not all activists at these fucking things. These things are magnets for chaos, you know? Well, no, and also those groups are, by the way, I mean, the whole fucking problem with the current formation of this protest movement or this revolution, it's the problem, and it's what's awesome about it, is that it's uh, modular, and it seems to be, you know, broken up in all these groups that have come together into this one thing, but there is no easier group to infiltrate. There's a lot sure. going on. I mean, it's a community of people that have taken to occupying giant chunks. Oh, dude, they showed Occupy Everywhere. It was a poster that someone put up online on the message board. I looked at it and showed all the different places where people are protesting. Like, what the fuck, man? That's when it really hit. When, how, whenever has it been like this before? Right, that's right. Never. It's never been like this before. Right. This is incredible. Yeah. This is a strange, strange time. And it snuck up on us. And it really makes you take into consideration, like, where's the, where's the end point? It's never going to get any better. Don't look for it. Be happy with what you got. Because the owners of this country don't want that. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. Well, the real question is, what is this going to accomplish? That's the real question. That's why it's so exciting to me, because this is a period of uncertainty. You know, there, there's, it's really obvious that people are pissed off. It's really obvious that the cat is out of the bag. Everyone yeah. knows this is a corrupt system. It's horribly, horribly corrupt for it. And no one's doing anything to stop any of this fucking hoarding that's right. going on. The fact that Obama, when he, he gave the bailouts, was trying to limit the rewards to $500,000. You remember that? Yep. As if, well, they need more than everyone else. Right. We'll limit them to $500,000. Like, what? No, it should be they get nothing. They get none of them get anything. If your fucking company needs to get bailed out, you don't get to get rewards. You don't get huge, giant fucking corporate payouts because it's in your contract. No, your contract doesn't exist. There's no fucking business anymore. It's all done. You cunts, you stole all the fucking money. You don't you don't get a big bonus for that, right. you fuckhead. Man, these people have been getting away with so much for so long. It's like telling them that everything has to be fair now. They're like, fuck you. Right. Like, I didn't get into this to be fair. Right. I got into this. Because I met my friend Tim at school, and then you all get together in the 80s, Gordon Gecko style, and start fucking raping the financial system. They're there to make ass fuck tons of money through every possible loophole. Do you think this is part of the uh, global awakening that everyone has been predicting forever, this kind of transitional well, you know, look, shift in consciousness? Yes, I think so. I think, you know, the financial system is insanely complicated. You know, I've tried many, many times to sit down and truly wrap my head around stocks and bonds and dividends and shorting, and it's fucking insanely complicated. Mm. It's There's so many players and so many pieces and so many things, and just the idea behind confidence raising and lowering the value of something and stocks climbing and falling, the whole thing being alive and mobile and constantly yeah. fluctuating. It's like, what the fuck is this? Right. What the fuck do you got going on here? We're running the money of our system on this crazy, unpredictable, sporadic, fucking pulsating, changing thing. Yeah. Numbers, ups and downs, and sell, buy. I'm like, wow, that's kind of nutty. That that shouldn't be that way. That The society should be much more stable. I understand that people have gotten insanely wealthy through this situation, right. and they don't want to change it because they, they get good at it, and they know how to continue to be insanely wealthy yeah. through this situation. But that ain't right, man. It's supposed to be based on something it's supposed to be one piece of gold equals one donkey there's a need for credit i understand there's a need for a lot of things but it's got to be a way more simple system than the system we have now because there's too much room to fuck with it it doesn't have to be the system we operate under the system we operate under should be simple and stringent and should it be really easy to follow and that's way easier said than done but that's what we really need to do no mix of words or music or memories can touch that sense of knowing that you were there and alive in that corner of time in the world, whatever it meant. There was madness in any direction, at any hour. You could strike sparks anywhere. 